Okay, uh, hello everyone. So I would like to uh, say a few words about the project I'm working on, and it's about restricting access to IPv printers with uh, OAuth framework. Uh, so the main goal of the project is to uh, define a general protocol between the, the client and the printing system that will al allow us uh, to use OAuth uh, to restrict access to the IPP printers. Uh, so the, the main problem is, is the one of the problem is to uh, define the general IPP client that can recognize if the given IPP printer requires uh, OAuth authentication and uh, then redirect the user to the uh, authorization server. Um, and in this case, the authorization server provides to the user some authorization procedure. And when the authorization procedure is completed, uh, the authorization server uh, sends to the IPP client the special token uh, called access token. And from this moment, the IPP client, when it talks to uh, IPP printer, uh, attach this uh, token, uh, this access token to the HTTP header, and the printer can use this HTTP header to uh, uh, verify the access rights of the user. Uh, so uh, the agenda of my uh, talk is very simple. First, I will uh, present how to merge together OAuth 2 and IPP. Uh, then, in the main point of my presentation, I will uh, show some security implications of the solution and uh, try to address some problems that uh, appear there. Uh, then, uh, I will summarize the proposed protocol and then there will be a discussion. So, uh, first topic, how to fit OAuth 2 into IPP. How we all know, uh, how every one of us know, the IPP means Internet Printing Protocol and it's a uh, basic uh, protocol uh, for printing in Linux. So everyone who prints something in Linux at some point use th this protocol. And uh, nowadays, uh, the vast majority of printers manufactured uh, already ha uh, have support for uh, the IPP protocol. And uh, in general, in IPP protocol, we have IPP client and IPP printer. So in our case, IPP, IPP client is just a local CAPS, yes? And uh, IPP printer uh, can be a real printer or it can be some uh, interface exposed by the print server or uh, some inter uh, an infrastructure printer. So this is some kind of interface that may be e exposed by some cloud print solution. Uh, and uh, IPP protocol is encapsulated in HTTP protocol so uh, on this level, the IPP client is a HTTP, uh, HTTP client and IPP printer is a HTTP server. So uh, OAuth is a general authorization framework that uh, came from uh, web applications and uh, it allows to uh, delegate the access rights to, uh, to other parties. Uh, so uh, in the standard, OAuth case, we have some user uh, that is using internet browser to talk with the OAuth client. And when the OAuth client uh, needs an access to some user data on some uh, resource server, uh, it redirects the internet browser to the authorization server. So the authorization server uh, provides to the user some authorization procedure like asking for a username or login or password or asking to sending a, a message or just reusing the, the, the current session, whatever. And uh, the user must complete this procedure. And when this procedure is completed, the authorization server uh, redirect back the internet browser to the OAuth client. And uh, uh, in the redirection URL, uh, authorization server and code uh, the special code uh, which is called authorization code and client must to retrieve this authorization code from this url and use this authorization code uh, this authorization code with direct communication uh, with authorization server to obtain the access token so from this point the client is using this access token to get access to the resource server so it works this, this way that to uh, every HTTP request that it's sent from clients to the resource server, the access token is uh, attached to it uh, to its HTTP header, 
and restore server can use this access token to verify the access rights of the client. Uh, the access token has uh, uh, the validity of access token is limited in time, so it's on, it's it's valid only for some uh, very limited time period, like for example one hour or ten minutes, and after that the the client must ask the authorization server for other uh, access token or uh, and force user to, to go again through the authorization procedure. So now we want to connect these two protocols. And the first question is, uh, what is what? So this is quite obvious that uh, in our case, the IPP printer is the resource server, yes, because this is the resource we want to get access to. And uh, the authorization server is uh, a third party that is used uh, to authorize the, the user. And this is a new actor in, in IPP. And uh, now the OAuth client must be our, our IPP client because there is no other place you can put it here. It really is. So uh, in this configuration, uh, our client is talking uh, directly to the printer uh, using IPP protocol. And uh, when the client realizes that the printer requires OAuth authentication, it must open the uh, internet browser uh, and redirect the internet browser to the authorization server. Uh, it allows the user to uh, complete the authorization procedure. And uh, when the procedure is uh, completed, the authorization server must somehow redirect the internet browser back to the client, which is, uh, which is the application is living on the user device. So uh, when it's done, the client retrieve the authorization code from the uh, re redirection URL and uh, use this authorization code to obtain the access token directly from the authorization server. And uh, from this moment, uh, all IPP requests that are sent to the printer has, uh, have attached this, uh, uh, this access token. So the printer now can use this access token to verify the access rights of the uh, user. It's really the access right of the client, yes. Uh, so in our case, the OAuth client uh, is on the user device, so on, on the same operating system as the internet browser the user is using to uh, uh, authenticate. And in OAuth standard, it's called uh, native client or public client. And uh, okay, I, uh, here I try to uh, summarize some main assumption about this configuration. So uh, first, I, IPP printer can be uh, controlled by only one authorization server. This is quite obvious. And uh, the other one, the IPP printer knows the URL of its authorization server. Uh, actually, there is already an IPP attribute defined uh, that uh, contains the the. the URL of the authorization server, and these attributes can be retrieved from the printer with get printer attributes request. And uh, important thing, uh, we are trying to define like general protocol. So the IP uh, client should be also like uh, general enough to be able to talk with different systems, yes, without any modification in the code, yes. So we would like to uh, IPP client to be able to communicate with uh, to be able to use printers from different systems uh, uh, that are built by other parties. And uh, uh, yes, and uh, the, another important thing, uh, all communication between IPP client and IPP printer and between IPP client and authorization server must, uh, must be done via HTTPS protocol. Uh, this is required by OAuth because in OAuth we are sending the access token, which is a secret. So we have to pr protect it. And the IP, IPP client must be able to ver verify the IPP printers and authorization server certificates. Uh, so uh, here I tried to show some uh, possible configurations, some possible architectures of the print system. So in the first uh, example on the left, we have uh, IPP uh, we have the client and IPP printer living on the same 
local network. So when the client wants to use the printer uh, and realize that the printer requires uh, OAuth, it go to the authorization server, go through the authorization procedure, get access token, and then uh, talk with the printer directly just by, by using this access token. Uh, in other two uh, uh, configurations, uh, the client uh, does not uh, talk directly to, to the printer, but uh, to some proxy. So like in the situation in the middle, we have infra infrastructure printer. So in this case, it's uh, some kind of solution like cloud printing. This is infrastructure printer can be somewhere on the internet. So it may be even on the same server as authorization server, yes. And uh, in this case, the IPP printer is this infrastructure printer, yes. And in the last case on the right, we have print server that uh, separates the client from the real printers. And uh, the client just uh, sent request to the interface provided by the print server. So in this case, the IPP printer is just the interface provided by the print server. And so the authorization goes also to the interface provided by the print server. Uh, now I would like to say a few words about security implications of this kind of configuration. Uh, so uh, the first, uh, why do we need OAuth? Yes, of course we need it for security. And uh, the first question is what security means for a print system? We can define here like two different goals. So the first goal is to protect user data. We want to make sure that no one can intercept uh, intercept the communication between the, the client and the IPP printer. And the other goal, the, the second one, which is directly connected to the title of this presentation, is we want to protect uh, printer resources. So we, we want to uh, restrict access to the printer to a limited set of authorized users. And uh, if, we, if we think about this for a while, we can realize that we cannot get the second goal without uh, um, fulfilling the first goal. Yes. Because if we cannot protect the communication be between the client and the IPP printer, the attacker can uh, inject the fake printer between client and IPP printer and intercept the access token. And, and uh, in, in this case, it can have access to, to, to all printers. Uh, so now, uh, Yes, and uh, as I said before, one of the assumptions is that the uh, IPP client uh, is general, so it should work with different uh, print system. And now that there is a problem because the IPP client uh, has no initial knowledge about the printing system. So it has somehow uh, learned about the URL of the IPP printers and URL of the authorization server. So we decided to uh, not to restrict the uh, sources uh, of knowledge of URL of uh, IPP printers. So uh, we allowed for, for any possibility. So the IP, uh, URL of IPP printers can be discovered via NDNS on, on the local network. They can be provided by a, by, a, by a user. They can be queried from the print server or any other uh, option is, is possible, like injected uh, to the system somehow by administrator. And now, uh, how, how can we learn about the URL of authorization server? So, uh, as I mentioned before, each printer knows its authorization server, so the client can just query the URL of the authorization server from the printer. And we can also allow user to, to uh, specify this, this uh, URL just allow administrator to, to provide it somehow to the system. And as I mentioned before also, uh, IPP printers and authorization servers must use HTTPS and the client must be able to verify their, their certificates. So and now there is a question. Uh, how secure is this approach? So uh, the only security we have is the certificates, yes. And the question is, what uh, what do uh, certificates and and the TLS give us? Yes. So uh, first, uh, the TLS 
guarantees us uh, that the uh, all the communication between client and the printer or client and authorization server is encrypted yes so uh, no one can can uh, intercept it yes and we have also a guarantee uh, that we are communicating directly with the given uh, host yes so if we are connecting to abc.com and it has valid certificate we are sure we are really talking to abc.com no not uh, no one else yes so this uh, protect us uh, against uh, main in the middle attack yes so no one can uh, uh, inject some uh, host that pretend to be uh, uh, abc.com but it's uh, something else yes and the question is what is missing so uh, we don't really know what the uh, domain abc.com is yes so when we connect to the domain abc.com from the website and we see it has valid certificate so we know that we have safe connection with the domain and we know that it's for sure this abc.com domain but do we really trust abc.com yes do we trust it enough to send their credit card yes so we, we have to know uh, what this host name means yes and uh, the problem is that uh, we don't have this knowledge here yes so the ip client is connecting to print server uh, the printing system and it gets a bunch of urls but it's not able to validate if these urls are, are really a printer yes uh, well on the internet really everyone can buy a domain with certificate it's it's not a big deal and uh, for the local network when we have some organization with, with many hosts like let's say hundreds so we have to assume that some of these hosts are already compromised so our, some attackers some potential at attackers can control some of these hosts yes so the attacker cannot change the name of this host because it's locked by the certificate but still can use this this host to attack our system yes it's e in enough to uh, announce this host as a printer on the internet and uh, this way, our, our, our client will connect to this host and send the, the data with, with uh, access point. Yes. So the missing uh, thing here is to connection uh, between the URL and the real uh, the real uh, node at the end. Yes. We have to somehow make sure uh, make sure that uh, the address we are connecting to is safe. So uh, uh, where to start? So we have to somehow uh, decide what is our initial point of trust is. Yes. So uh, of course, the obvious choice is authorization server, because usually we have only one authorization server and many, many printers. So it's much easier to verify the authorization server. Yes. So uh, we can uh, enforce some, uh, some uh, uh, security me measures here. So uh, for sure, the client must some, somehow keep the list of trusted authorization server URLs. Yes. So this list can be provided by the uh, system administrator, or we can also uh, allow user to add, to add some new author authorization server to the list. Uh, in case when we use some public service on the in internet that is well known, we can uh, add it to, to the list uh, uh, also uh, uh like automatically and uh, the last option is to uh, query the ipp printer and for the authorization server and add it to the list what is uh, what is the, the most da dangerous option here since we still do not trust the ipp printer yes so uh, of course we can read the url from the ipp printer show it to, to the user and ask him if uh, the user uh, trust this URL, yes, and uh, this is quite problem uh, problematic way of doing things because uh, usually users trust everything and they just click yes, 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 yes. yes. So the, it should be some scary window here. So when we have uh, now when we have client and list of trusted authorization server URL, we have to somehow verify the URL of the IPP printers. So uh, we know that the 
uh, that the printer knows its authorization server and you can query the authorization server from the printer, yes? But uh, still, like everyone can claim it's a part of the printing system, yes? So we somehow, uh, uh, we somehow has to ask uh, the authorization server if given uh, printer is part of the system. So we should somehow send to the authorization server the URL, uh, URL of the printer and ask uh, if this printer is really part of the system and it's managed by this authorization server. And the authorization server should be able to, to give us this information. So uh, uh, to solve this problem, we propose to extend the basic uh, OAuth 2 protocol by token exchange request. This request is already defined in the OAuth 2 standards, it's defined in this RFC. And uh, this request is sent when the client already get an access token from authorization server and be before this access token is, is sent to the printer. So uh, a client uh, sent to the authorization server this request with two uh, main information in inside. So one is access token. It's a proof that the client already has session with the authorization server. And the other one is URL of the IPP printer, yes. And now the authorization server uh, returns the response with add point access token. So it issued a special token for this particular printer or uh, return an error like uh, the error is called invalid, invalid target in the specification. It, in our case, it means that it's not my printer. Yes. And this solution has some advantages and disadvantages, of course. So the main disadvantages is that someone has to implement this. Uh, so I, I wasn't able to find out of box uh, open source OAuth two solutions that support token exchange request. Although implementing it, it's quite uh, quite straightforward. And uh, the other disadvantage is uh, more complicated implementation of IPP client because now we have like two levels of authorization. Yes. We, we, we have to keep track uh, 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 two types of uh, access token. One is access token, uh, which we use to talk uh, with authorization server. The, and the other one is endpoint access token that we use to talk with the IPP printer. So these are the advantages, uh, the disadvantages. The advantage, the main advantage is that this solution is in general more secure because IPP printer never known uh, is, is, I mean, never get the main access token, so it cannot leak it. And uh, authorization server can issue different access, uh, endpoint access token for each printer. So even if, if some printer is compromised it, uh, and uh, the attacker intercept the endpoint access token, it cannot use it, yes. And it also may be more convenient for users because we can uh, issue an access token which is uh, uh, valid for a long period of time and uh, then we can for each printer we, queue, we can issue a endpoint access token which is valid only for, for uh, several minutes yes and we, because the tech token exchange uh, does not uh, re require user interaction yes it's, it's done in, in the background so in this case, uh, let's see, user has to uh, go through this authorization procedure on the, let's say, once a day, yes. And then all this uh, auto, uh, authorization uh, for the particular printers is done in, be in, in background. And the question, uh, are there any other options? Uh, so we try to, to analyze another solution of this problem. So one of the solution is to make sure the URL of IPP printers are uh, trusted. So in this case, we would have to somehow query the URL from the print system. Yes. So in this case, we would have to forbid or have to authentication for the discovery printers or for printers 
provided by the user directly was kind of pro problematic. The only problem is that the the list of all uh, printers in the system may be very large. So it seems to be quite impractical. And the other approach, it may be divide the printers uh, into different classes and for each class of printer uh, use different rules to, uh, to avoid the uh, necessity of additional verification. No, but it, it makes the protocol very complicated and uh, it's, uh, no, it's probably not doable. So yeah, and we are open to any, to any ideas. So if you have some solution for this, please let us know. And uh, now, so I would like to just summarize the proposed protocol. So this is very simplified, uh, the OAuth protocol we would use uh, uh, for uh, getting access to the IPP printer. So the authorization request and token request, there are the standard uh, requests used by OAuth. In the first one, uh, the user uh, goes through the authorization pro procedure and obtain the uh, authorization code. Uh, in the second, uh, the client uh, uh, exchange the authorization code for uh, access token. And then there is a token ex exchange request, which we would like to add to the protocol. So uh, in this request, the client uh, sent to the uh, authorization server the URL of the IPP printer and uh, gets back the uh, endpoint access token. And then for this particular printer, the client uses this endpoint access token when communicating with the printer. So, the whole procedure is sum summarized on these two, two, two slides. So uh, first, uh, when we are connecting to, to the printer, we send the uh, get printer attributes. And uh, if the printer requires uh, OAuth authorization, it has an attribute OAuth authorization server U URI. And this attribute contains the URL, uh, URL of the authorization server. And then the client must check if this authorization server is on its trusted servers, list of trusted servers. If it's not, it's the end. We can try to rescue by asking client if he ask, if he trusts the server and want to add this server to the list of trusted server. And uh, in the next step, the IP client uh, must query um, metadata from the authorization server and uh, make sure it's registered to this authorization server. If not, if not, it should uh, try to auto-register to this authorization server. Uh, all these uh, exchange are defined in, in this uh, RFC documents. Uh, and then the IPP client uh, uh, has to start the internet browser show it to a user and redirect the in internet browser to the uh, authorization server. And the user uh, goes through the authorization procedure and uh, at the end, the control re returns to, to the client and the client got uh, authorization code. Then the client exchanged the authorization code for access token. And now before talking to the printer, the client uh, sends to the authorization server the token exchange, this additional re request, and it uh, just uh, exchanged the URL of IPP printer for endpoint ac access token that is used uh, to communicate with the printer. And now the last point. So the current status of the project and discussion. So uh, uh, now there is ongoing effort on uh, with PWG group uh, so uh, we are working on the protocol, try to build some standard. And uh, as I know, some uh, part of the OAuth to stacks is already implemented in CAPS 2.4, and the more is supposed to coming in the next CAPS. And uh, we are currently working on the prototype IPP client in Chrome OS. Uh, at the beginning, uh, it will be released as experimental feature soon. And it means that to, to uh, activate it on the operating system, 
the user will have to switch the, the, the feature flag. By default, it will be disabled for now. And yeah, and we are happy to, to get any feedback and opinions. So, yeah, thank you very, very much for your attention. On these slides, I, I've tried to summarize uh, some, some of the issues that may, uh, that may appear. So one of the issues is how to verify identity of URL uh, with local addresses, yes. So on, on the local net network, the uh, address of IPP printer may not be, uh, may not be unique. So the possible solution is to maybe use the fingerprint of the certificate, or it's ugly, uh, but uh, effective. <laughs> or maybe can we use the MDNS name, yes, is, uh, as a printer, so URL. And uh, the other problem is how to deal with OAuth to scopes, because the uh, IPP printer um, now needs uh, authorization server, but also may provide scopes is that should be used uh, by IP by IPP client to to uh, ask for yes. uh, this is like the uh, access rights we want to get from the authorization servers so yeah thank you very much are there any questions uh, Piotr, uh, there is there a uh, 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 limit uh, limit of uh, TLS version for uh, OAuth uh, uh, standard. Sorry, can you re repeat? Uh, is there a limit of uh, like minimal TLS version for uh, uh, implementing of? Uh, TLS version? Like HTTPS, like TLS 1.1. Yes, ah. What is the minimum version of TLS which is needed? Uh, I think it's the last one. I, it's defined in one of the RFC uh, document. I don't now remember. It's 1.2 or 1.3, I think. Well, I, I don't want to say something wrong. I, I just don't, don't remember. I think it's the uh, secure one for sure. <laughs> Not this compromised one. Uh, I'm just asking about uh, about this because uh, some uh, distros are uh, uh, are like uh, uh, denying older TLS, so so uh, TLS. So I would like uh, to know whether like older print IPP printers, which uh, supports only older TLS, uh, could uh, work with off. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, but when it comes to older printer. Uh, they don't support the new protocol, yes? So they, they would be hidden behind the infrastructure printer or behind the print server, anyway, yes. Uh, like, I mean, uh, like uh, IPP everywhere and IPP uh, uh, 2.0, which, which is supported by driverless standards, uh, are out about uh, 10 years. So maybe there, there, there will be uh, some uh, some printers which can be used uh, with off now, but uh, in the future when the security standards uh, with, uh, will rise up, it, it will stop work with off. If if our standard uh, is uh, like actual or updated to the to the latest TLS version. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I haven't looked into the particular version. Yes. Here we base on OAuth 2.0. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's also scattered across different do RFC documents. Yes. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to uh, older printers, they don't support this. Yes. So they, they won't support OAuth anyway. And uh, at the beginning, it will be mainly about the some cloud print solutions or some uh, 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 commercial so solutions is that provide the IPP interface, and uh, we will allow them for uh, um, standard OAuth authorization. Yes. So the idea is that when you have some, like say, commercial solution in your company 
you don't need a commercial client anymore because if it allow for uh, authentication with the uh, with our with our OAuth standard, it will be like the OAuth client will be part of the operating system. Yes. So it's it's uh, the plus that the advantage here is that you don't have to implement the client when you provide this kind of print system solution. Okay, thanks. Do we have right now? I don't see any. So One thing in Chrome OS, do you have already GUI uh, support for OAuth so that when a user prints to an OAuth uh, protected printer, that their pop dialogues up for the password for for getting the into the authentication server and so on or not? Uh, it's not ready yet. It's partially it's there, but it's mainly used for testing now. But CUPS 2.4, is, is this good enough that one can already use OAuth? So we have OAuth implemented like outside of CUPS, because uh, we need access to the certificates, yes, to, to, to the user's storage. And uh, we also need a certificate verification. So uh, it works this way that uh, we uh, do OAuth outside of CAPS and then pass the access token uh, through the CAPS. Yes, we send just an extra parameter in the uh, job sending to CAPS, and it's then uh, in the CAPS it's rewrite to the uh, IPP request sent to the printer. Oh, yes. So Thank you. Any more questions? We have still seven minutes in this session. Otherwise, we will get a, a somewhat longer containerization session. Monica? <laughs> Any further questions? No further questions. So then we are a little bit early finishing this session of the OAuth because it seems that we have not very many questions about that. Everyone is, is, is now completely confused. Can I go grab some coffee? We can go up, grab some coffee, and perhaps get, uh, start some minutes early with the containerization. Till, please keep to schedule oh, and don't sorry, start sorry. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, starting a little bit early with the documentation session. I had nearly forgot one session. Yeah. And then at 30 after. <laughs> Let's go and take some. Yes, yes, let us do so. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. How do I show this one?